Hi everyone, Greg Moore, Vice President of Fitness for Workout Anytime Franchising. I'm coming to you with some tips based on mistakes, common beginner mistakes in the gym and how you can avoid them and be successful in the gym. So let's start out with what I consider the most important mistake and that is not taking advantage of your clubs free, because almost every club does this, free what they either call an assessment and or an orientation. Guys, that is a big mistake. They hire fitness professionals for a reason and trainers to help you be successful in the club. Take advantage of that help. Learn how to use the equipment. Have a plan. The most important thing you can do. Another mistake, not downloading your club's app. Now, why is that important? Because almost every club out there has an app and usually there's lots of cool stuff in there to help you design and do your exercise program. And also many clubs have nutrition help built into that app. So even if you wanna go it alone, everything you need to build and do an exercise program and nutrition program is often in your club's app. And any good club should have an app like that that is available for you. So take advantage of it. Another mistake, not creating a schedule and a plan for exactly when you're gonna work out each week and then coordinating it with your work and your family, right? Because guys, let's be honest, most of us don't have endless time. We've got a plan. When am I gonna get there? Where is your club? What time am I going from home? Am I going from work? Am I going between? Am I going in the morning? Am I going at lunch, evening, weekend? Guys, remember you need at least three workouts per week to get anywhere. So before you get started, when are you gonna do those three workouts? And coordinate that with your family, right? If you're married, you got to tell your significant other when you're going to do it. Enroll them. Tell them your plan so that they can help support your success. Another big mistake, big one, not, not setting what we call SMART goals for your workout program. So what is a SMART goal? It's specific. It's measurable. It's achievable. It's relevant and important to you because you're the only important person that counts in this case. And then last but not least, it's time bound. So when you say I want to lose weight, that's not a smart goal. How much weight do you want to lose? Put a number on it, right? Is it measurable? That is something that's measurable, right? So we want something that's measurable so we can measure along the way. You could do that weight, you could do that body fat, a trainer could help you do that. For example, achievable. You're not gonna lose 20 pounds next week. All right, guys, that's not gonna happen in a healthy way. I don't know any way that's gonna happen, by the way. So here's the bottom line. Your goal has to be achievable, so think through that. That's another reason to have that trainer appointment and have a fitness professional assist you in setting a realistic goal. Relevant means it's important to you. It doesn't matter. The goal has to be relevant to you, meaningful, and get you excited, right? T is for time bound. So when you say you wanna lose 10 pounds, do you wanna lose 10 pounds tomorrow, a week, 10 weeks? Give yourself a goal completion date, right? Because a goal without a completion date is not a smart goal, it's just a dream. So set a specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound goal for yourself before you get started, right? Also, not planning your weekly workout. So you just kind of walk in there and go, I don't know what I'm gonna to do today. Guys, you need to know what you're gonna do. Is this a cardio day? Is this a resistance training day? Is this a day I'm doing yoga, Pilates? Have a plan. When am I going? Have a schedule. What am I doing? Why am I doing it, right? You wanna know that every time, have a plan. Moving too fast when weightlifting, another big mistake. Guys, lifting weights, lifting super heavy weights or lifting really fast can get you hurt. Do you need to do that? And the answer is no. When in doubt, move slower. It's safer. The exercise feels harder, is more productive from, in terms of building and toning muscles, but it's also safer, right? Another mistake, not recording your workouts. Guys, if you're not recording your workouts, how do you know if you're making progress? How do you know when to increase your weight or when to increase your speed? So write them down or use an app. That's what part of what a trainer does, but you can do that on your own. Write down your workout so you have a record and see 
where you've been, where you're going. It's very motivating and it'll help you move forward more rapidly, right? Not progressing your workouts. This is related to not reporting them. So what do I mean? We typically see people, we show a weightlifting routine, they're using the same weight 16 weeks later. Guys, your muscles will not continue to grow and adapt if you don't challenge them. So we have to progress. We have to either lift more weight, do more repetitions, and or both, or weightlifting will stop generating results and will plateau instead of continuing to make progress, right? Same thing on the cardio side. If the first day you're walking three miles an hour, 2% grade on a treadmill, and you're doing that for 20 minutes, that may be great. If you do that every single day, at 10 weeks later, nothing is happening because you need to raise the level of challenge as your body becomes accustomed and adapted to the workout. And last but not least, and this is number nine, doing what we call steady cardio rather than intervals. Now, there's nothing wrong with steady cardio. Steady cardio is like getting on a bike, a treadmill, and walking or moving at a steady pace. That's called steady state exercise. Is that bad? It's absolutely not bad, but it's not going to give you your biggest bang for your buck, and it's definitely not going to help you lose weight, and most people want to lose weight. So what do you do instead? You undulate your intensity, and it's really as simple as that, right? So you go hard for, say, a minute, and then you lower the speed or the resistance and stay there for a little while until you recover and you do it again. So what we want is undulating and said, work hard, recover, work hard again, recover. Most cardio pieces have interval programs or you can just do it yourself. Raise the resistance, go faster for a period of time, slow down. So switch to interval training for cardio and you'll have way more benefit. I hope you've enjoyed this time with me, follow those nine deadly sins, those nine mistakes and the solutions I gave you, and I know you're going to be successful in your workout goals.